performance report. Paving the concrete track at Bristol Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee. The world's fastest half mile track. The Gomeco SL450 was chosen by Baker Concrete of Monroe, Ohio. involved the total reconstruction of the track, the perimeter crash walls, interior crash walls, pit row pavements, pit row walls. Uh, we followed a demolition contractor who preceded us by two weeks and we played try to catch them after that. Was there a specific time frame for uh, all this to be done? Absolutely. It started the, uh, the spring race was March the 25th. The equipment was on the job tearing up the track on the 26th of March. We mobilized the Monday after Easter and were given 13 weeks to complete our portion of the project. We visited with Jim Hosea, project manager, and Rob Ford, project coordinator, for Baker Concrete. After we filmed the paving of turn four, transitioning into the final stretch of the track. We asked why Bristol picked concrete. That's what was there. That's what they'd used before. Prior to that, the track was asphalt for many years, and they basically ended up when it was asphalt. They would have to resurface it every every year after the races. And concrete prior to this had given them about 18, 20 years, and now they went back with concrete again. As owners of the track, they're typically experiencing a three to five year life before they have to remill and resurface with asphalt. We believe that what we've given them is about a 25 year life. What are the basic differences between the old track and the new track? Well, the big difference is geometry. The old track really didn't have a, uh, a very straight profile. The new track has a uh, parabolic belly in it. It's uh, about a six degree dip if you draw a line from, from end to end. And uh, that geometry is what's allowing them to have the side-by-side -side racing where they're getting two and three ride wide, which is what they wanted. Early on, we selected Gameco to furnish the paving equipment. We wanted to make sure that the new specifications for the track were something they felt they could build a machine to accomplish. Um, we selected them, worked with them. The engineering was tricky on the job. It required an awful lot of input from the machine manufacturer as well as from the track designer. Uh, things worked out pretty well. It's the, actually the engineering at Gameco is one of the reasons we chose Gameco for the job because they have a very strong engineering department. We knew they could handle it. The equipment chosen for the job was the Gameco SL450 and two Gameco work bridges. The equipment would ride on rails, with the top rail riding on the new crash wall, using brackets that were specially designed by Gameco Engineering. 1,000 brackets were manufactured. We poured the, the, the system was, uh, the pavers and the work bridges all ran on a rail system. Uh, on the bottom end, we poured a footing that, that varied in its location relative to the track both in height and in its distance away from the track and on the top half of the because we were the walls were in place when we were pouring the track Gameco designed a special bracket that was able to accept 18 inches of horizontal movement and 14 inches of vertical movement to handle how the, the paver adjusted as it went around the track. The key was to keep the end of the frame as close to the wall to minimize the amount of hand finishing so there was a lot of intensive engineering involved in that process to get the machine in the right place everywhere on the track. The track is always 90 degrees to the wall. When the wall was at 57 percent, the machine was at 57 percent also. Hosea said accuracy was the goal, not production. You know, it was eight inches per pass and it turned out to be about 45 to 60 foot per hour. Uh, and the supers, uh, the transition into the supers, it went a little bit less than that just because you're going from a 15% a to a 50% or 25% to a 50% and then the transition area um, was slowed down our production. But in the straightaways and also and once we got into the supers, production was close to 45 to 60 foot an hour. And one, one of the things you kind of have to understand about this track and what we were trying to do and what we were having to deal with, there's a lot of really complex geometry that's going on in this entire process. When you're coming out of the straightaways and you're going into the turn and the rails are going this way and the paver wants to go this way and there's, there's so many things going on. So those turns became a very, we had to slow down a little bit in those turns, but that, that's, that's where all the key was, was getting those transitions right. 
Ford said the key to accomplishing the transitions was fully automated legs with slope sensors on the SL450. The legs would automatically adjust to plumb or a true vertical position. Right, we had, we had fully automated legs so that as, the, uh, as you came out of the, 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 the lower slope sections and you went into what they call full super, the legs automatically adjusted. We didn't want to have to be doing that by hand. We had an automatic sensor system added to it. And those were basically holding the legs vertical. Yeah, they kept the legs vertical. At all and, times. And that full automation, I think, is one of the keys to getting the smoothness that we got on that surface. The SL450 featured the adjustable auger out front to level the concrete. The cylinder finisher featured the vibratory undercarriage. From start to finish, the Baker team was proud of their Bristol, Tennessee accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, the effort those guys in, the hours they worked, the, everything they did down there, I mean, it was really, you never heard any real complaining. It was all, everybody had a goal and they were pushing for it. And even these, you know, when you're paving for 18 hours straight, those guys are still charging hard, trying to meet all their goals and not slowing down, not giving up. Superintendent had a rule of thumb, if you didn't want to be there, you weren't there any longer than one day. You're off and you're going somewhere else. He wanted people there that understood the, what we had to do, understood the time frame we had to do it, and didn't want to hear any complaining. Two joints were cut longitudinally in the track. The transverse joints were cut every five feet, or one and a half meters, in the front and back stretch, every ten feet, or three meters, in the slopes. Baker designed a saw frame to accommodate the steep inclines. 160,000 racing fans were on hand 13 weeks later to see the new track at Bristol Motor Speedway in Bristol, Tennessee. The drivers called the track incredible. All we can say is the feedback we got from the drivers, uh, they, they, were, they were all pumped up. It was a new Bristol for them. They didn't have to bump people out of the way and they could run around the low the low run, the medium run, or the high run to pass traffic as needed. Uh, they were all enthusiastic that we've given them something that uh, is truly special. This has been a performance report on the Gomeco Concrete Finisher with Baker Concrete Construction of Monroe, Ohio. And we asked, would you do it again? Absolutely. <laughs> Where's the next one? Gomeco, <laughs> the worldwide leader in concrete paving technology.